analyst and the curator of the Iranist newsletter. She joins us now via Skype from Jerusalem. I, I want to get a sense, how significant is this, Holly? Well, these protests are some of the largest we've seen since the 2009 post-election protests known as the Green Movement. That's been seven years, and right now, this has been going on since Thursday, and it started in the city of Mashhad, which is one of the second holiest cities in Iran, and it's spread up to over a dozen cities. And right now, we're seeing that it's growing and growing. At first, we didn't see things happening in Tehran, and today, Tehran University has been at the forefront of the protests. They're mostly having chants that are led against the regime. What do you suppose sparked these protests? Um, we're, we're hearing food and fuel prices, um, but it seems that they have taken a, a decidedly anti-government turn. Well, it's very interesting to note that while these protests did start in Mashhad, they were actually led by the hardliners that are against the Rouhani government. Now, the Rouhani government is known as a pragmatist faction of the Iranian government itself. So it was rather a surprise that these protests that were meant to be against the Rouhani administration had kind of quite essentially turned from a controlled burn to a wildfire. And that a lot of these protesters are leading chants against the Iranian government itself. So I think they weren't expecting for this to turn out the way it did, and it's kind of become out of control, or it's supposed to be something small, but it's just spread throughout the country. Uh, Holly, uh, you tweeted earlier about the what you called hypocrisy of the Trump administration when it comes to Iran. Can you take us through why you believe Trump's latest utterances on Iranians' right to protest are disingenuous? Well, if you look at the Muslim ban, Iranians were one of the biggest hit um, um, when the first Muslim ban started out in January. Now, we've seen various versions of it, but it is Iranians that are mostly impacted. And I'd like to note that Iranian Americans are some of the more successful diaspora in the United States. And so here we have an administration that is banning Iranians from entering the United States and now coming out and saying that they're in support of these protests. And I find that very much hypocritical because if you support the Iranian people, you wouldn't be banning people from leaving the country to come to the United States from what you call an oppressive regime. And so for me, that itself, it, it stands alone for why they are a hypocritical government. What do you suppose that the Trump administrations and say other governments around the world should be doing right now in response uh, to this? Well, the U.S. government has a history in meddling in Iranian affairs, and we can go back to history since the 1953 coup d'etat of um, a democratically elected prime minister. And unfortunately, um, have making such statements discredits the um, protesters themselves. And there's a reason why the Obama administration did not make similar um, statements during the 2009 post-election protests, because they knew that by saying that, they were going to discredit the protesters and they were going to be labeled as foreign agents and deal having dealings with the CIA and whatnot. And currently, that's what's happening on the ground ever since these um, statements have been made by pre the president of the United States himself, um, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan, um, 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 Press Secretary Sanders have all made statements, and these statements are right now being used against the protesters themselves. So I think the best that the people can do is watch and wait to see what happens. And unfortunately, like protests in past, these protests will be repressed, and I think in maybe a week's time, we won't be hearing much about them. But the fact that we're actually making statements that we think are in favor of the Iranian people, they're hurting them more than anything. Uh, Holly, this is a rare display. We don't see people take to the streets in Iran uh, very often, and oftentimes there's harsh consequences for uh, for doing that, especially without government permission. There's also uh, a lot of problems in telling the story. Uh, we're, we're, we're relying very much on, on eyewitnesses' videos. Journalists can and have been uh, locked up in jail for, for reporting on protests such as this. Take us through some of the, the difficulties in, in getting the word of these protests out to the rest of the world. Well, what's been interesting is a lot of the videos I myself have been posting have been from citizen journalists. Um, Iranians, as you said, are not allowed to protest. Right now, um, we're heavily de um, depending on social media um, applications like Telegram for Iranians to put out their videos. And for the majority of the videos we're seeing, you're getting anonymous posts. And 
unfortunately, it, it is a risk. And like you said, that it, the Iranian government tends to repress um, freedom of speech. And Iran actually is one of the top 10 countries in the world that imprisons journalists. So what we're seeing is a lot of um, ordinary Iranians putting their lives on the line and risking imprisonment and long-term detention. And right now, um, a lot of these people have been arrested. They've reported at least 50 to 100 of people have been arrested in various cities, and I wouldn't be surprised if it would be a lot more. And I would imagine there are some people taking names. There are play clothes men that have been recording and taking photos. So I think what we're seeing right now is just the start of some of the arrests. All right. Thank you so much for your insight. Holly Degras there, live from Jerusalem.